Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Karen. In today's video, I would like to review a pattern or project I just completed. Uh, it's McCall's 8139. I have been eyeing this pattern, view C, from it came out. But I kind of shortened the length a bit. I used some linen I got from mood fabric back there um it was not a border print but it was a bold print i really like the bold print because i wanted to create um uh inspiration i wanted to create a dress from the inspiration i'll put the inspiration up here so you can see it the inspiration was this orange and i think beige dress it was a long sleeve i didn't have enough for a long sleeve I bought three yards, I think. Yeah, I think I bought three yards, I'm sure, of this linen from Mood, and I did the best I could. What I did with it, I shortened the sleeve a bit. I also, I'm gonna bring it up closer you can see, you can see it. I shortened the sleeve a bit. I did a bit of pattern matching um, for some parts of it, like the sleeves, I did pattern matching. I did pattern matching for the pocket area, for the waist area. I'm going to show you the inside as well as the outside of the dress, but let me let me get my chair out the way and then hopefully you can now see the dress. I wanted to show you parts of it that I can't show you while I'm holding it up. Okay, so for this part of the dress, I wanted to show you the sleeves. The sleeves, I, as I said, did some pattern matching to ensure that the pieces of the sleeve were unique when I turn it around. I specifically wanted these two pieces for the border, but I wasn't going for this. I was going for like a black in the middle area because I had some green buttons, but it turned out the way um, it was cut, this cute piece um, ended up in the middle and I wasn't sad about it. I really like the way it turned out. For the collar, let me, for the collar, I cut two pieces. I cut one with the floral here, and I cut, oh, you can't see it. I'm gonna have to take it down for the collar. I'll show you the collar when I'm sitting. Here is the back of the neck. So when I cut it, I wanted to have the pattern showing across here. When I cut it, I wanted this piece in the back here. The problem with the, having this piece in the back like this, you might can't see it, but it turned out the pattern is upside down. Um, after realizing it, I, I see it, it's still okay, but I don't, I don't know, I really don't know. Um, the back of the sleeves as well, I, when I cut both, again, I made sure they were uniform, so you have the same thing running on the back of each sleeve as you have on the front. Um, this pattern was cut so that when I put the back pieces on, I would have this. If I had known before, this piece is cut in two. These are two different panels. I could have just done one whole piece here, but it's a good thing I had to slit this in two because I didn't have additional fabric to do all in one piece. So I was careful stitching this down to make sure it looked like one whole piece. Let me bring this up some more so you can. So for the pockets, it has a side panel pocket. So this piece is one piece. And then this other piece I had to cut to kind of create this illusion here as if it's all one, it's not a big deal. The front piece, I have buttons going down and I tried to make this white in the center all the way down. 
but if you notice I have a little gap right here I don't think it will be much of a problem because I will be wearing a belt with it so it shouldn't be a big deal but this was my idea to have these pieces um, going down on the front and then on the top the bodice the border piece I cut across so that it gives because I had too much going on at the front going down I wanted to have this piece going across to create a kind of breakup or an illusion there it recommended pockets but I didn't want pocket in there because again this is too much so I eliminated the idea of the pocket this is the other pocket piece at the back right there now I'm gonna show you the inside of the dress so the previous uh, piece in the previous piece I showed you the outside how I lined the pattern how I aligned pieces of the pattern to match and then um, now the inside I forgot to show you the belt because it makes a difference um, the belt and cutting it as well I had to plan carefully to ensure that both pieces I had to do this so that when I put this belt around the waist of the dress it forms um, it aligns with the back so it wouldn't be a belt that throws the whole pattern at the back out and looks confusing because again for me this is busy so when you put this in the back it just aligns and, and finishes the border that started at the front of the bodice to the back. Um, the inside is different. The inside would not match. And so that's why I did it this way where I'd have this piece at the back to form that matching piece outside. Now for the inside of the dress. So it's the usual small hem that they, they recommended. The inside, I just turned it in on itself, put a piece of interfacing in there, and just um, finished it. I always do a double yoke, and for the yoke inside, for me it didn't matter, but I still tried to align it to ensure that it was fine. Um, doesn't have a, a, a color stand, it's just the color that made the whole thing so again I told you the reason why I did it this way I put the fancy part on the inside so when you fold it over then it aligns with this the other piece I just did plain white not white the same pattern I just look for a blank spot and cut this so that when I lift my collar it wouldn't add craziness to the back of it it just was okay this Piece, like I explained sleeve kind of aligns my upside down <laughs> back bodice and this is the piece I was telling you when the belt goes around the waist it forms that border and finishes the border that was started at the front of the dress if you can see it right there I did front seam because this linen was really thin it is really a, a thin thing um, for the back I interlined it with some cotton poplin I had because I needed some stability with the pattern as well as a neck piece I was gonna add the yoke and it brought the color out more for the border Again, on the inside, I did French. I don't want to say French seam. I'm just going to say I enclosed the, <laughs> I enclosed the seams. The seam on the waist is also enclosed. And um, when I got to the end where I would put the buttons I kind of cut out some of the fab fabric so that it wouldn't create and this was from experience it wouldn't create a bolt because I've made many dresses and practice and realized that by the time I got to here I couldn't get my presser foot over this to create the buttonhole because it was too much of a bulk 
So I just, after practicing and ruining several, I realized that I had to always take the piece out. So the buttons went on fine. I'm gonna show you the buttonhole on the other side. That's what I was saying, this button alignment was perfect. And I'm gonna show you the piece that didn't work out so perfect. And again, this was not to align with anything, it just fell into place. This was where I was trying to align that border so it would break up the front but everything just fell right into place. And I'm so happy. Um, things weren't gonna always work my way. So, of course there had to be a mess. Um, again, I did, I closed the pocket, French seam you wanna call it, the entire thing all the way down. So it gave me a clean finish on the inside of my dress. Now for the other front, I wanted to show you the mess. I wouldn't say it's a mess, it still turned out fine. See the area I was telling you? Again, this I, I wanted this alignment to be black like I saw on the inspirational picture, but I think this piece came out fine. Actually looked better. All right, this button holes went down on the front. I think that's best stand. This is the pretend alignment perfection I wanted to show you because it's not perfect so I wanted to show you this so where is it see this piece doesn't align with this piece came down to the bottom it was different but I couldn't do anything to align that but as I said the belt plays an important part in this because this will be covered with the belt and I won't it won't be visible and if it is it's not bad it really isn't bad Here's my pocket. I was telling you about this pocket piece. I had to cut this piece so it aligned well with this piece so it wouldn't look so obvious. So this is basically my dress. This is how I finished it. I'm absolutely proud of how it turned out because I was worried with limited pieces of fabric so I used what I had but um Unfortunately, I think it's too busy for me. <laughs> it's just too much pattern piece. It's just too much color, too much everything. Um, I was looking at my shoe and thinking, what am I gonna wear to tone this down? The black sandals I was trying to put this with is too much. I don't have a white sandals, like a flat thing. I have like strap shoes that are white or beige or something like that, but I don't have a white flat sandals, which might work best with this. So I'm going to try and style it, put it together. And it's the best I can do because I don't have a simple plain sandal that will just kind of tone this down a bit. But yeah, this is my dress using McCall 8139. I love what I did with the pattern. I love the way it turned out with what based on what I had. It, kind of stretched my creativity a bit in terms of matching pieces. Some didn't go well, but others worked out well. Um, yeah, so that's it. Again, I don't really like this dress, but I like the craft, I like what I did, I like how it turned out, but it's not the dress that I'd want. So I'll keep it moving and see my next project, what will happen or what will become of um, my efforts. That's my video for today. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have a great day. Bye.